Hello video editors, welcome to Storysham. In this tutorial, we're going to look at three ways to turn real-time footage into a super smooth slow motion. We're going to do this all with the built-in effects in Adobe Premiere Pro, so no need for any additional plugins. And by the end of this video, I will also show you how to slow down the audio part, so stay tuned if you want to know how to do that as well. Okay, let's get started with the first method. For this one, you need footage that is recorded with a higher frame rate than your sequence preferably double the amount of frames per second. What this means is when you're editing on a 30fps timeline, for example, you want to record footage on 60fps or even 120fps if you want to slow it down even more. Let me show you why by using this example that I've got ready on the timeline. As you can see here in the sequence settings, I'm working on a 29.97fps or 30fps sequence. The two clips that I've got here are two similar shots but were recorded on 30fps and the other one was shot on 120fps. If I give them a playback, you can see that both clips play on the same speed and look the same. The only difference is that Premiere only uses a quarter of the frames in the second clip because the timeline is only 30fps. So this means that we've got enough frames left to slow down the second clip. And we can do this by right clicking on the clip and then select speed and duration. And then we can lower the speed to 25% because we've got 120 frames per second. And now we can click OK. Here on the timeline you can now see that the duration of this clip is 4 times as long. And if I give this a playback you can see that it all looks super smooth. And that's because we've got the frames to slow it down. On the other hand if I do the same to the other clip and slow it down to 25% you can see that it will look terrible. And that's because this clip lacks the frames to provide smooth playback if you slow it down. So you will get better slow motion results if you record on a higher frame rate. But what if you already finished recording and didn't use a higher frame rate? Well, there is a way to achieve a similar result in Premiere. Let me show you how, but first this. Thanks to MotionArray for sponsoring this video. MotionArray is a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. At this moment they offer more than 80,000 premium quality video templates, stock videos, music tracks and sound effects, all to help you make better videos. And MotionArray is membership based, this means that you sign up for a month or a year and boom, you get everything. Download whatever you want and use it wherever you want. You can use the link in the video description to learn more and start making better videos with MotionArray. Let me now show you how I use the optical flow option inside Premiere to slow down footage without a higher frame rate, just like the clip that you're watching now. Back inside Premiere, in the sequence settings, you can see that I'm working on a 30 frames per second sequence. And the clip on the timeline is 30 frames per second as well, so no frames available to slow it down smoothly. Now let's right click and select speed and duration again. And then down here, I can choose an option for time interpolation. Besides the default frame sampling, we can also select frame blending and optical flow. With this optical flow option, Premiere will try to achieve a smooth playback by interpolating the missing frames. You will get the best results if you don't slow this down any further than 50%. So that's what I'll do here and then click OK to apply. As you can also see here by this red line, this effect needs to be rendered before you can see any results. So I'll just hit the Enter key on the keyboard and then Premiere will start rendering. And once Premiere has finished rendering, we can do some comparisons. And now you're watching the same clip on the left and the right at 50% speed. On the left we've got the default frame sampling and on the right we've got optical flow. As you can see in this example, the option for optical flow works really well. And if I slow it down to 25%, you can see an even bigger difference in smoothness. And that's mainly because this clip barely has any motion blur. You'll see that if you use clips with more motion blur, that optical flow will have its limitations. Like in this example where the rest of the slow motion looks pretty good, but the moving jumping rope does not. I also noticed that things like sun flares could cause some issues if you choose the option optical flow. But besides that, you can still achieve some pretty acceptable results with this method. Another way to control the speed of the clips inside Premiere is by right clicking them, then select show clip keyframe, time remapping and then speed. This will change the opacity line into a line that you can use to control the speed of the clip. Make sure that the video track is high enough or you won't be able to see this line. You can now control the speed by moving the line up or down as you can see by the percentage counter. And the best thing about this control is the option to add keyframes and then create speed ramps. 
Let me show you how. If you hold the control key and then hover over the line, you get the option to add a keyframe, like this. And if you add two keyframes, you can control the part between these two keyframes without affecting the entire clip. So if I now move this down, then only the section between the two keyframes has been slowed down. And if you select and move one of these points here on top, you can turn the keyframe into a ramp, giving it a smooth speed transition. And by using these blue bezier handles, you can improve the smoothness even more. And that's how you create a nice speed ramp to your footage, just like I did with the clips at the beginning of this video. I also wanted to mention the time warp effect. In some older versions of Premiere, you might find an effect named Time Warp under Video Effects Time. I also noticed that this effect is available in Premiere version 22.0 and not in 22.1.2. So I asked Adobe if it will come back to Premiere, but so far no clear answer. However, I still want to mention this effect for those of you who have it available. This one is somewhat similar to the optical flow option, but it has a few more control options, like the option to add motion blur. But the biggest downside of this effect is that you no longer have access to your entire clip, or as far as I know. Instead of extending the duration, this one will give you the same duration for a clip that is slower. So keep that in mind if you want to use the time warp effect. And by the way, please let me know in the comments if you have the time warp effect available and also what your version of Premiere is. And now, as I promised at the beginning of this tutorial, I will also show you how to edit the audio part if you make a slow motion. I will slow down this clip in Premiere and I want to match the sound with the slow motion. So if I slow this down to 50%, you can see that the video part is extended. But the audio still has the same duration. You could fix this with the Rate Stretch tool, which you can find here, or hit the R key to enable it. With this tool enabled, you can click on the edge of the audio track and then extend it like this. And now the audio is slowed down and will match the video. If you have a speed ramp in your video, then you could extend the audio in the following way. The first step, after you've added some speed keyframes, is cutting the audio track at the point of these keyframes. Then slow down the part between the keyframes and create a speed ramp. Then move this cutoff part of the audio portion to the end of the clip, and extend the audio part in the middle with the Rage Stretch tool. And to finish it off, add some audio dissolve transitions like constant power and you will get something like this. And that's it for this slow-mo tutorial in Adobe Premiere Pro. If you enjoyed this one or learned something new, then please like the video or leave a high five in the comments below. I would really appreciate that and it helps me to grow my channel. And finally, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day. Thank you.